Hogwarts Legacy has so many different wands, and today I'm going to go over most of them. There's around 30 or so wands that belong to non-playable characters alone, that's not even including the wand you choose in the game, which by the way, there's 8 different styles of wand and 3 colors for each of those, and if you add on the 14 different wand handles with their respective 3 colors each, that comes out to over 1000 wand combinations that you can have in the game, which is ridiculous. But I'm not going to go over those today, I'm just going to go over all the wands you don't really get a good look at because the game doesn't allow you to pause cutscenes. We're talking teachers, we're talking bad guys, students, everybody. So without further deliberation, I'll go ahead and kick it off with the wand maker himself, Ollivander. I should mention, feel free to pause at any point, some of the wands are cooler than others so I go through kinda quick. Gerbold Ollivander is an eccentric wizard who likes to keep his wand behind his ear as you can see in this picture here. The bottom of his wand is round and flat with an intricate swirly pattern on it, and the wand itself is actually kinda swirly and bendy too. It reminds me a lot of the firebolt from the Harry Potter. Throughout the scene we get a few different shots of it, you can see that the wand itself is orange with a lighter swirl going through it. And his wand may be one of my favorites that we see. But while we're in the wand shop, we'll take a look at some of the other wands that we as a player get to take a look at before choosing our own personal wand. But honestly, the first wand we pull out of the box is really cool in my opinion. It's a nice warm brown with gold trim going around it. The only thing I don't like about it is down here by the handle. It's got this unnecessary loop thing. You get a better look at it here when the player has a mishap trying to swing it and it pops up into the air. If they ever make collectible wands for this game, I really hope this one makes the cut because it is really a cool wand. Unlike this next one that Ollivander pulls out, I don't personally like this wand, it's kind of clunky and big at the bottom, but I do like how it looks like Ollivander just went out back and snapped a branch off the tree. You've also got a little gold ring floating on it, I don't know how it's connected exactly but there's a couple of other wands in the game that look like that as well. We also get another good look at Ollivander's wand which is kind of twisty and branch like itself. Moving on into the castle with some of the professors, Professor Ronan's wand is a nice reddish color. We don't really get any good close-ups of it, but we do get a couple of different angles. His wand is pretty basic, but it is a little bit nicer compared to some of the default wands that we'll see on some of the NPCs a little bit later on. But before we get on to the other teachers, I do want to take a look at this cutscene from Ronan's class. We get a look at these two students, as well as Natsai, one of our first companions that we're going to take a look at. You can't make out much about these two students' wands from this angle, but if we switch to a few frames later, we get a better look at Natsai's wand, as well as, I think this person is a Weasley. He's got that more stick-like wand that I like, and knot size is pretty cool. It's got that same basic shape that Ronin's has, but it's got that orange handle, as well as a white shaft. And don't worry, we will get a good look at the other companion's wands as well. We get a good look at this Slytherin student's wand. This is what I've been lovingly referring to as the default wand. You can see down here that it's got all these notches and tapering, and then at the bottom it's kind of got a little orange crystal. You'll see a lot of the NPCs have a very similar, if not exactly the same wand as this one. But moving on to Professor Hecate's wand. You can see here in the classroom that it's solid black all the way up and down. It kind of looks like a stick as well, but it's got this wire wrap that goes around the middle of it, which I personally like. You get a really brief look at it later on in the game when she's apparating, where the wand spawns in before she does, and you get a good look at it without any fingers or anything wrapped around it, so you can see what the handle looks like there. Heading back to Hogsmeade though, we've got the troll fighting scene, and we've got two NPCs that are wielding the default wand. You can get a pretty decent look at both of those there, a few frames apart. Then we've got Officer Singer's wand. Hers has that light warm brown that we're familiar with with a gold band around it. You get another look at it a few frames later, it's got a little pendant in the middle of it which I really like. It's only in the frame for a few seconds so we don't have a whole lot to look at here. And then we've got Professor Weasley. Her wand actually looks exactly like one of the ones you can make in Ollivander's shop yourself, so it's pretty basic which makes a lot of sense because a lot of the other Weasleys that we know of have pretty basic wands as well. I believe this style of wand is called Stocks or something like that. Hers is another one that's not on the screen very long, as is Professor Howen, the Beast's Professor. Her wand looks like a stick plucked straight from a tree with a handle carved into it. Like I said before, I really like this style of wand. You can kind of tell that it's a little bit lumpy throughout, and if we scroll down in that same picture, we can actually see a wand handle on the table, and of course, this little Niffler is the one that found it. After that, we've got another fantastic beast lover, Poppy. Her wand shows up briefly one time in the game, and if we zoom in, we can see that it's one solid color with a swirl for a handle, which I think is really cool. There's really not a whole lot of wands that I don't like in this game, but you know who Poppy doesn't like? Poachers. We get a decent look at two of the Poachers wands here in this next shot. The one on the right here has a similar style to Mrs. Weasley's. The other guy's is more stick-like, it's got a bend in the middle and it's a nice dark brown color. And if you don't know, these two work for Rookwood, we'll take a look at his wand now. We get a few shots of it throughout the game, but the best one is this one here that they showed off in the State of Play last year. It's a more polished black wand with some silver in the middle. It's definitely different than it was in the State of Play, which I appreciate because it was a default wand then, but now it gives off some more sinister vibes. We also get a look at one of Rookwood's grunts with a sinister looking wand as well. His looks like a white stick version of the Death Eater wand we see in Harry Potter. And in this same scene we get a look at three other people's wands. This guy with a wand similar to one that we saw before. 
And this other person with a completely brand new wand. This pub goer has a nice sleek white wand. It looks like it was machined as well, kind of like Rookwood's. Uh, got some silver in the middle, which is nice. And then we get our first look at Sebastian's wand. We'll get a more detailed look at that later on. But going back to Rookwood for a second, now we've got his ancestor, Charles Rookwood. His wand has a nice sleek design with what looks like it could be a multicolor design. It's hard to tell because it's a flashback, it could just be the lighting. But it's got this notched pattern up here, and we actually get another look at it a little bit later on. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on, but it looks like it's got some metal rings towards the top of the handle. The end is a nice plain brown wood. And in that same shot, we actually get our first look at Percival Rackham's wand. This is a little less smooth than Rookwood's, which I always appreciate because it looks more natural. We actually got a pretty good look at his wand in one of the first flashbacks where he's depositing a memory. The whole thing actually looks like it's got a metal spiral going up about halfway up the shaft from the handle. And then the handle itself looks like what I've been calling a claw handle. It looks like it could have came from like a dragon or something, or it might just be carved out of wood. You can't really tell. In this shot here, you can tell that he's definitely the leader of the Guardians of the Ancient Magic, because in my opinion, he's kind of got the coolest wand, but we also get Fitzgerald over here on the right. Her wand looks like it's broken up into three main sections. You've got the handle, which is white. There's a little black section in the middle that's got some notches and tapers. It's kind of hard to see in this angle, and I don't know that we ever get a better look at it, but the end of the shaft is white as well. And I know I said Rackham's was the coolest, but that's not to say the other ones aren't cool as well. Because in this angle of her wand, you can see that it's kind of like an old looking wand. It reminds me of Ron's wand from the first movie, if you're familiar with that. But in this shot, we also get a look at San Bacar's wand, the fourth and final protector of the ancient magic. You can't really tell a whole lot from this angle. It kind of looks like it might have a swirl up the handle and onto the shaft. And in some of the following shots, you can see that that's kind of the case. It's definitely got a unique handle. It's got that nice dark brown wood. It's kind of got a spike at the base of it. And then the spiral goes up most of the wand. And then in the middle of the wand, it's kind of got like a silvery section separating the handle from the shaft, which would make sense because most of the other wands in the game have something like that too. And that'll wrap it up for the guardians or protectors or whatever they're called. But we're not quite done with the flashbacks yet. Now we've got Miss Morganox's wand. Hers is a simple spiral wand that looks like the ones you can get from Ollivander's yourself, with a slight difference. As the game progresses, you can see that she never adds a handle or anything to it. And in this shot, you'll notice that her wand looks like Miss Garlic's, but without the leaf at the end of it, which I'll go ahead and show now. It's kind of hard to get a good look at it because the scenes that she's in are always so bright and vibrant, but you can kind of see it here. The color of the wand itself is maybe a little bit lighter than Morganox, but at this angle, you can kind of see the leaf I was talking about. It's definitely a lot more noticeable in the cutscenes when she's moving around. And there creeping in the background is Sebastian. We can show his wand now. His wand is one of the ones that we get the best look at throughout the entire game, not only in this shot, but in this shot as well. If they were to ever add collectible wands for Hogwarts Legacy, this is definitely one that they would make. The base of the handle has this gold crown-shaped emblem. It kind of looks like the same thing carries on to the top of the handle as well. It's got some more of those like gold spikes. Then the handle itself is green with black diamonds. It seems like they were definitely trying to mimic the spine of the old Harry Potter books. If you took the paper cover off the hard copy books, it looks very similar to this. Then the end of the wand is a plain, smooth white wood. I feel like most Slytherin wands are plain, smooth wood just like that. You see it with like Snape's, Malfoy's, uh, pretty much all of them. But we'll move on to Sebastian's sister, Anne. Now hers is a wand I'm kind of surprised they showed in the game at all, because she's not really that big of a character, but I guess if they give NPCs wands, they kind of have to give her a wand too. It's not very complex, but it's different than the default wand. It's got a couple different shades of brown, the bottom of the handle is thinner than the top before it tapers and notches into the shaft of the wand, which is where it gets lighter. It doesn't look as highly polished as Sebastian's does. I wonder if she was in Slytherin House or a different house. If you know, let me know in the comments. And while we're in the Sallow family, we'll take a look at Solomon Sallow's wand, their uncle. This is another wand that changed from the state of play. In the state of play, it was a default wand, but now it looks kind of like Professor Weasley's except a little bit darker. Again, this is like the stock pattern that we can get at Ollivander's on our own. We actually get quite a few shots of this throughout the game, and I'd say of all the stock wands, this is the one we get the best look at. You can see on the notches themselves, at least on the dark color wand, they're a little bit lighter, which is kind of nice. But heading back to Hogwarts Castle, we're going to cover the last few teachers. I hope I'm saying this right, but Mudiwa Onai, Natty's mom and the divination professor, seems to have the default wand. It would make sense that if any of the teachers had a less customized wand, it would be her because she practices wandless magic so much more. In this scene, it looks like it might have a tint of green to it, but it's hard to tell because it could just be the lighting in this scene. But we'll move on to the teacher whose wand we see the least in the game, Professor Sharp, the potions teacher. This is the only scene we see his wand in the game, and it's very brief. But you can see the base of his wand looks like a little metal knob, and then the handle is thinner in the middle than it is on both ends, with a spiral grip that goes all the way around it. And then after some notches with metal in it, you get to the shaft, which is plain and smooth, kind of like Snape's wand, which is the only other potions master that we know about. But moving on to the final wand in Hogwarts, Professor Fig. 
We only get a few good looks at his wand, even though we've seen him since the beginning of the game. But it's this scene here in his office when we're looking at a map. The handle is more natural and club-like, with gold rings up and down it. And then the shaft is a slightly darker brown that's highly polished and smooth. Not to constantly compare wands to other wands, but this one looks like it could be based off of Ron's or Harry's wand. But before we move away from Fig, I do want to give a slight spoiler warning. The next two wands do contain minor story details. Nothing game-breaking or anything like that, but if you haven't got a chance to play the game, I don't want to spoil anything for you. I'm not going to talk in detail about it, but if you don't want to know, you've been warned. The next wand is Miriam Fig's wand. This is one of the cooler wands in the game. It looks like a white version of Dumbledore's wand from one of the Fantastic Beasts movies. Not that those are really going anywhere now, but anyway. The entire thing is white, and only the handle is actually spiraled like the ancient magic symbol. We don't get a whole lot of time to look at this wand, but it is put out there long enough for us to get a pretty good look at it. And then we move on to our final wand, which is a special wand. It is the one that was used in the Collector's Edition, if you ever saw that. You know, the one that sold out immediately for every console. And I know as a pre-order gift, it wasn't very good, but I really, I kind of wanted one of them, being totally honest. But anyway, it's a pretty simple wood wand with gold spirals going all the way up and down it. And then outside of that, it's got a different kind of metal, probably goblin metal, wrapped around it as well. If you haven't seen my video on how to shiny hunt for Fantastic Beasts, I'll go ahead and link that here. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and stupefy that like button and subscribe for more. But that's all I've got for you today. I will catch you next time, nerds.